Well hello and a very warm welcome to my channel. I'm Louise Savage of Louise Savage Muses. I'm welcoming you with open arms if you're a returning viewer and equally open arms if you are viewing my musings slash ramblings slash wafflings for the very first time. So I've had a really interesting reading month. On the whole it's been very successful. Uh, one or two little glitches along the way but we'll come across those uh, I'm sure shortly. Um, so I started the month with doing something that I almost never do, which is to reread. I went back to Caris Davis's, uh, I think this is her first short story anthology called Some New Ambush. Caris Davis is a, a real favourite of mine. I absolutely adore her writing, particularly, I think, her short stories. And um, I read this many years ago, but I came back to it and, and was just bowled over it again or bowled over by it, I don't think I bowled over it, because there's such a range, such a scope of different genres. Some of them are, are, are sort of got fairy tale, are riffing on fairy tales. Some of them are really contemporary. Um, I just think she is the absolute master of, or mistress of um, the short story. And there's one story in here particularly, which I think is probably uh is it because i love her short story the quiet in her other anthology but i think this is one of my favorite short stories and certainly one that i admire um more than than most because it's exquisite it's written on one page so well across two pages if we're going to be picky um, i'm just trying to find it so i can show it to you and i'm i'm yeah here we go um it's called homecoming 1909 and that's all it is. It's just those one and a half uh, very brief pages. But what she manages to do in that in that in that page and a half is to take you to a completely different place, to make you see um, the world just that little bit differently. And you don't, you know, you can't. Put, the date is important. The title is important. But you just you're given a jolt at the end, you know, you're you're seeing the world through very different eyes. And I think that that is what really good short stories should do. You should you should be given this kind of blast of a another place, another experience, another character. And you should walk away from it kind of knowing something that you didn't know before or making you view the world very, very slightly differently. So that is. That was a great start to my reading month. I think I needed the comfort of going back to something that um, I knew I would really enjoy. Um, and then next up, I read what is fast becoming, I think, one of my favourite books ever. I read Prophet Song by Paul Lynch, which is a, a really um, uh, quite depressing, potentially um, dystopian novel about... Uh, it's imagining that this new um, regime uh, appears in, in Ireland and it has a secret police force and it starts to clamp down um, on civilians and what civilians can do. Civil rights are, are sort of completely go out the window. And it focuses on Eilish, who is a mother of uh, four children and spanning from 16 to, to a baby. I don't quite, can't quite remember what sort of age he is. Um, at the beginning of the novel but anyway so she's sort of living this very what we would recognize as quite ordinary middle class life she's a scientist she you know she has a job um, and suddenly her world is turned upside down because her husband is um, disappears he's, he's taken off by the secret police and um, I found this utterly absorbing I thought the way that the sense of menace grows during the course of the novel it's just beautifully structured and beautifully built um the writing is sublime um so i can completely see why this book won the booker prize and i really want to read more of paul lynch's work now and this was actually my book of the month this month and then i read um the hearing trumpet now i'd i'd picked this up at the wonderful west kirby bookshop um, and, you know, I, I I love that bookshop because I always find things that I wouldn't stumble across before. 
and um, when I did the book haul, there were quite a few people. There's, there's obviously quite a lot of love around this book. It's by um, Leonora Carrington, who seems to have been a really kind of eccentric woman. Um, uh, she, she had a, a sort of extraordinary life. You know, she, she grew up in high society. She had some awful mental breakdown. She lived in Paris. She lived in Mexico. She lived all over the place. Um, so I was really excited for this and I absolutely loved the first few chapters. I thought they were brilliant. It's about a 92 year old woman who's living with her son and his wife and her grandson. And they are absolutely ob obnoxious people. The way that they treat her, um, the way that, that she sort of barely leaves her room. Um, uh, it, it, it was, I, I really enjoyed the writing and and also she has this friend Carmela and I and she she goes to visit Carmela and they have this conversation and I just loved being with her and Carmela uh, and Carmela buys her a hearing give, gives her a hearing trumpet which she's found I think on a market or an antique store or something like that um, and and she uses this hear trumpet to listen in on her son and his wife and her grandson having this conversation and it's very clear that they're they're thinking about get, you know moving her into an old people's home and up to that point I was really absolutely loving it and then she does go to this old people's home ostensibly on a kind of trial visit and the the, the novel just becomes completely from my point of view completely surreal this old folks home is full of all these very odd uh women and there's quite a sinister sort of psychiatrist who's looking after them all and the 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 buildings that they're in are really quite fascinating it's quite quirky um there's, there's there are all sorts of um pencil sketches all the way through as well that kind of you know hint at, at the fact that it is quite a surreal book but it just lost me there's one there's one point where there's this huge digression about an abbess from the past and i i don't know whether it was the you know the the point the time that i was reading it or whatever but i i'm not quite sure why i carried on reading it to the end i think i kept hoping it would redeem itself um so yeah i just don't think i think the the, the sort of the first third brilliant the, the 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 remaining two thirds i think just not my cup of tea and maybe if i'd sort of studied this at uni or something like that i'd have a different relationship with it but um it just felt quirky for quirky's sake, I would say, in my view. So please, if you've read it and you love it and you want to defend it, please do in the comments below because I'd love to get a different perspective on it. And then um, I think I've banged on about this. Uh, next week, I've got the privilege of interviewing the wonderful Mary Beard. Um, so I've been looking at her sort of back catalogue. And this is a book that she wrote, wrote called How We Look the eye of faith and I wanted to sort of get into her mindset and to think about you know the way that she looks at things I thought it'd be really interesting before interviewing her um so this book looks at art and it looks at Mary Beard looks at um the way that human uh, the representation of the human form sort of develops in art but in particular what the way we look at it and other people in the past have looked at art can tell us about us as human beings and she said you know there's a lot in here about classical art Greek and Roman art but equally she starts off with the Olmec I think they're called um, yes in Central America and I, I was completely ignorant about these big I'm trying to find a picture for you these big heads, here we go, um, that have been found all over sort of Central, Central America. Sorry if that's not very clear. Um, you know, she writes about those and, you know, the way that, that we've tried to make sense of those uh, through, the, through the ages. She looks at Egyptian art. She looks at um, the terracotta warriors. So there's a real sort of, and, and it's all sort of uh, interwoven with beautiful, beautiful illustrations, which I really appreciated. Um, and then in the second half, she looks at the way that the relationship between art and religion and, and what art can tell us about religion and, and vice versa. And there was a bit that I found absolutely fascinating. If you do read this book, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but this is a, a Buddhist um, shrine in um, Ajanta in northern India. And I'd never heard of it. 
um but it's this this sort of sequence of these caves that have got all these amazing illustrations in of, of buddhist um religion and there's this wonderful story of this female um explorer who went to try and sort of uh, document the paintings in the caves because they're so full of bats and birds and you know deteriorating because of the um because of the uh climate um and and so you know there's this wonderful story of this woman that I'd, I'd never heard about before so i really and i just love the way that mary beard writes if you're interested in art or you're interested in religion or you're interested in both um this is this is definitely a book that that you should head to i think you really really enjoy it and it is you know it's just stunningly produced it's beautiful just holding your hand um, and then I read, uh, I went down to the Women's Prize, and I know I've mentioned this already on my channel, so I'm going to make it very brief, but I thoroughly enjoyed Love Marriage. I'd, I would describe it as a really good summer read, very compelling plot, compelling characters. Um, each character has a really good sort of story arc, but it's essentially the story of um, Yasmin, who's a young medical, well, no, she's not a medical student, she's a doctor, and um, she is from a... a, a, a background where um her father was a doctor he sort of pulled you know pulled himself up from um this terrible childhood in in india and um and her, she's engaged to a young white doctor and it's about what happens when the two families meet and collide because uh, yasmin's from this very sort of what well, she thinks on the surface of it is very conventional um Indian family and um and Joe has this incredibly unconventional mother um who uh is a feminist who's written books about um she's she's in the process of writing a book where she's photographing lots of different penises and you know writing about that um so and and the first sentence of the book is um uh about sex, what well, I can't I'm trying to remember what it is now. In the in the Garami household, sex was never mentioned. Um, so you've got that that household versus this other household where um, her her um, future mother in law is very very out there. And they drive there in the car, and Yasmin's really worried. She's so worried. She's left her brother. She's insisted that her brother doesn't come because he's quite a quirky character as well. He has this uh, interesting story arc too. Um, so there's lots in here about sex, about um, what mothers tell their what mothers tell their children, what's passed on to their children, what mothers keep secret. So you've got one mother who's got this whole Yasmin's mother whose past is a, quite a mystery to Yasmin, compared to to Joe's mother whose past is kind of completely out there and shared with anyone who wants to listen. Um, and I and I thought that was that was beautifully beautiful beautifully portrayed. And I will be going off and reading more Monica Alley. In fact, I've already acquired um, a copy of Brick Lane at Brick Lane Bookshop. And then finally, this month was Louise Doughty's Whatever You Love. Now I've read a couple of Louise Doughty novels before. Um, Apple Tree Yard particularly sticks in my mind and that was made into a, a really good TV series as well that was a, a sort of big bloster, bloster? It wasn't a big bloster, it was a big blockbuster some years ago was what I was trying to say. Um, and I picked this book because, and now where are we, I think it was May's Savage Prompts Reading Challenge was to read a book with your where you've got your name shared with the author. So I knew I had this on my bookshelf. I bought it at a charity shop some time ago um, and had not yet got to it. To it. And oh my goodness, this was a, a, a really, um, this, this novel I would describe as being incredibly psychological. So if you want a novel where you're really inside somebody's head in when they're going through real trauma, this is exactly the novel for you. And I could not, I wanted to just sit and read it, but I had to keep giving myself breaks because it's it's very intense. And it tells the story of, I've forgotten her name actually, protagonist. 
I can't remember her name. Are we ever told? I'm not sure. But anyway, it's told from the point of view of a mother whose nine-year-old daughter has has gone missing. So you open with that sort of real tension and she's sort of replaying where her daughter is and blah, blah, blah. There's a knock on the on the door and it's it's the police and they've come to deliver some awful news um, about the daughter. And at that point in time, the mother is living on her own with her daughter and her young son, who's very young. And I think he's about three or four. And um, and what happens is this this trauma to do with the daughter unleashes loads of feelings about her relationship with her daughter's father, who was her husband, um, David. And the book really, really explores the the sort of the the pressure that people are under when they when they separate when they divorce when there's a new relationship um all sorts of um really really visceral feelings are unlocked in this story and it's also a page turn you know it's very sort of tightly plotted so you know really um uh there are moments where you're kind of on the edge of your seat wanting to know what's going to happen next or how this particular scene's going to pan out um it's a very um kind of insular novel so I feel like I've sat in that house with the mother for hours and hours and hours um ruminating on my relationship and there's all sorts of lovely twists like you've got these anonymous letters that are written to the mother that appear on the doorstep every now and then and and eventually that whole story arc is untangled so there's an awful lot going on in here and um, it has some really strong messages about loyalty, about betrayal, about maternal love, about paternal love, um, about envy, um, about sex. Um, and I, I absolutely loved it. I'm really, really glad that I picked it up and read it this month. So there we go. That was my June reading experience. I hope you've all had amazing reading experiences in June. Please let me know what went well, what didn't go so well this month. Um, and let's look forward to a fantastic uh, July full of hopefully some sunshine here in the UK um, and some very interesting reads. Take care everybody.